It is Wednesday, February 7th, and the Splash Zone is back in your life. I am Matt Modi with my three favorite NBA player props for tonight's NBA betting slate. I was able to hop in the lab, found three plays that I absolutely loved. But before we can get into today's picks, got to do a recap from yesterday, which was a pretty good day. We had a nice bounce back day yesterday on my three picks. We got two of those three to cash. It was a pretty brutal beat with the one play we lost as well. We had Paolo Bancaro under 22 and a half points. He did cash this in the third quarter, but he didn't score at all in the fourth quarter. And the way in which he cashed was brutal. He had 21 points and the Magic had the ball taking the last shot in the, uh, in the third quarter. They missed the shot, but the ball went out of bounds off the heat, Magic ball. On the inbounds pass, Paolo Bancaro got fouled, made both free throws, scored 23 points, didn't score at all in the fourth quarter. He also had six free throw attempts in the last two minutes of the third quarter. So it's a pretty brutal L. Nobody wants to hear me complain, especially when we still had a winning day. We cashed Jalen Green over 21 and a half points. And those of you that followed me along, we cashed his 25 plus and his 30 plus ladders as well. So that was a nice chunk of change if you tailed me on that. And we cashed Devin Booker 30 plus points. So yesterday we ended officially two and one with a profit of 0.98 units. I don't uh, officially track ladder plays, whether they hit or not. That's more so just me giving advice and letting people know what I am going to do. We have been hot with our ladder plays. We got one to cash on uh, on Monday, and we got Tuesdays to cash as well. Very nice. But on the year, with yesterday's profit, we are up 50.80 units with an ROI of 28.87%. Just incredible, incredible success. We're having up over 50 units before the All-Star break is amazing, but we're not done yet. Let's hope we can keep it going. If you are not already, I would appreciate it and would recommend if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then of course, this video, like, comment, all that good stuff helps me out a ton. I love reading and replying to the comments from everybody. Whether it's nice or not, I still like kind of going through and reading the comments. But enough of that. Let's get into today's picks. Let's get wet. The first play that we're going to go ahead and lock in here is in the Pistons versus Kings game. And we're taking De'Aaron Fox over 26 and a half points. This is at minus 105 odds at ESPN bet. So I will admit that Fox has been admittedly pretty cold recently. He's only gone over this number in four of his last 10 games. And even more recently, he's only gone over in one of his last five as well. To begin the year, he hit this pretty consistently. So his season long results still look pretty good. But I got to admit, he has been cold recently. So what, what's nice about that is we are absolutely 100%, no doubt about it, fading recent results with this De'Aaron Fox pick. And, and one thing I really like doing is fading recent results. I will say one reason why Fox has been a little bit colder recently is Sabonis has been absolutely cooking. So his usage rate has increased and all that stuff. So you can, you can at least explain a little bit away why Fox hasn't been as good. Either way. The reason why we're riding with Fox today, A, I love the fact that we were able to fade recent results, but this is such an incredibly juicy matchup against the Pistons that it represents the perfect, absolute perfect opportunity for Fox to bounce back. We've targeted lead guards against the Pistons all year. It's pretty consistently come through us, come through for us, excuse me. So I see no reason why we should, uh, we should not do that today. And it's just been, it's just an amazing matchup. According to Courtside Pal, the Pistons are giving up literally the most points per game to someone of De'Aaron Fox's shooting profile, the most points per game to someone of De'Aaron Fox's scoring profile, and the second most points per game to someone of his playmaking style. Literally by all three metrics that we look at, with the two most important being shooting and scoring, incredibly, incredibly great, juicy, amazing matchup against the Pistons. The Pistons, so their last game against the Magic, the Pistons, both point guards, Fultz and uh, Cole, didn't go over their point total over under. Prior to that, four straight point guards had gone over their point total over under against the Pistons. That includes Russell Westbrook, who had 23 on an over under of 10 and a half. Now we targeted Harden in that game. Technically, he's listed as a shooting guard. It ended up being a Russell Westbrook day. Uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander scored 31 against the Pistons on an over under of 27 and a half. Even with how cold Fox has been recently, he still attempted 20 plus field goals, like 20 plus field goal attempts in six of his last 10 games, and at least 15 or more field goal attempts in nine of his last 10 games, with pretty decent three point volume as well. So the overall volume's there, the three point volume's there, and the matchup is amazing. So I think this is a great opportunity 
for Fox to bounce back, cashing over 26 and a half points for us. This is not a play as of right now that I'm laddering up to 30 plus. Maybe if I do over the course of the day, if I end up wanting to, I will let you guys know. As of right now, I'm just sticking with the mainline play. Next up, Cavs versus Wizards, taking Donovan Mitchell over six and a half assists plus 140 odds at ESPN Bet. This is an amazing price that we are getting at plus 140, but I got to say we are we are definitely not, not even close, fading recent results with this Donovan Mitchell pick. Mitchell has been on fire from an assist perspective recently. He's gone over this number in eight of his last 10 games, and in the two he missed. He had six against the Bucks, so literally one assist away, and then five against the Kings, so it wasn't like he completely dropped out or anything like that. The reason why this number is so low is because Darius Garland is back for the Cavs. He's been back for four games now, and Donovan Mitchell has gone over this number in three of those four games. And if you just isolate just to that four-game stretch, he's averaging 12 potential assists per game as well. Now, I know that Garland has been playing limited minutes, and that is going to increase. But Donovan Mitchell has been so good in the assist department that I still think it's worth riding his assist tonight, especially because of the fact that I think we're getting a discounted price because of Garland's return, right? If Garland wasn't playing, or if he was confirmed to be playing in the, in the uh, 20 minutes or so, I doubt we'd be getting over six and a half at plus 140 odds. And I think the value's here incredible. Another reason why I really like this play is because of the matchup against the Wizards. Similar to the Pistons, but instead of for points, it's for assists. Just an incredibly juicy matchup. The Wizards give up the most assists per game to someone of Mitchell's playmaking style, which is the most important when it comes to assists. And then even for ancillary stats, right? The second most assists per game to someone of Donovan Mitchell's scoring profile. Now, if you look at shooting profile, that's more middle of the pack. But even if you go even wider, like rebounding profile, which Courtside Pal does have, it's still a great matchup according to that with uh, the, the, the Wizards giving up the third most assists per game to someone of Mitchell's rebounding profile. All that really means is that lead guards get a ton of assists against the Wizards. But if you just look at Donovan Mitchell, and Darius Garland. The third reason why we are on this play is because it's technically a better matchup for Mitchell than it is for Garland. Pretty much across the board, right? The Wizards give up the sixth most assists per game to someone of Garland's playmaking style and the fifth most to someone of his scoring profile. So yeah, that would still technically be a good matchup if you just look at it uh, in a vacuum. But compare that to Donovan Mitchell and you can see that it is a better a better matchup for Donovan Mitchell, which is why we are going with him. Another reason why we're going with him in general and why specifically over Darius Garland. So our second pick, Donovan Mitchell, absolutely love it. Next up, Hawks versus Celtics. I'm taking Trey Young, four plus made three pointers, plus 180 odds at FanDuel. I will admit I was debating taking Trey Young's points as well. But because of the matchup, I'm specifically going with this three pointers. But if anybody wants to lock in his point total as well, instead of three point prop, I'm not going to talk you out of it. And I do kind of like pumping him up to 30 plus as a ladder play. So I'll go ahead and give that out as an honorable mention. You can get that at plus 210 odds. I'm going to put half a unit on the 30 plus ladder play. Again, we don't officially track whether ladder plays hit or not. If I were officially tracking them, we would be up on the year. I can promise you that. You can check my picket profile to confirm. But we're just going to officially track the, uh, the three point prop which I still think is really good. Obviously, I really do like this play. This is a drum that I've been beating all year, but you want to take your point guard point props and your point guard three-point props specifically against the Celtics defense. It's because of the way they play defense. Obviously, the Celtics defense is amazing, but the one area, and I'm not even going to call it a weakness because it's kind of by design, but where they give up a lot of points, right? Obviously, if you're scoring 110 points, whatever the Celtics give up, those points have to come from somewhere. And where the Celtics give up their points is they play a lot of drop coverage on pick and roll. Now they play, they don't play super deep, right? Not as deep as the Sixers or other, other teams. So they play up a little bit higher because they have athletic big men, but they do play drop coverage. And because of that, they give up a lot of pull up three pointers to guards that run a lot of pick and rolls like Trey Young, which makes sense because props.cash lists the Celtics as the fourth best matchup in the NBA when it comes to point guard three point props. And that is right within Trey Young's wheelhouse and how he plays. This is per NBA.com. Trey takes the second most pull-up three-pointers in the entire NBA, 6.6 .6 attempts per game. That's second only to Luka Doncic, who is above him. And Trey runs the most pick and rolls per game as well. He runs 12 and a half pick and rolls per game where he's the lead ball handler. That is by far 
the most in the NBA. So even with no Clint Capella, he's still going to run a ton of pick and roll. He's probably going to pull up a ton as well. So Trey's played the Celtics in only one game so far this year. He hit six three-pointers in that game. If you want to date back to last year's playoff run, which I do think is applicable enough because it's the same head coach, same style of defense for the Celtics, Trey made four or more three-pointers in all of the last three games against the Celtics. And Trey has also just been cooking, if you look at his recent stats as well, not isolated for the Celtics, just look at him recently. But I do like the fact he did miss this last game. I admit I would have been a little bit nervous if Trey had hit this his last game because I think of all the stats, the most flip-flop method, the most highs and lows is probably three-point props. And if someone's cooking from deep like Trey has been recently, that would have made me nervous because eventually the other side is going to drop. No, he did miss this last game. So it's not like he's riding a five-game heater or anything like that. And I do think that, again, because of the matchup, it is a great, great opportunity to take Trey and his made three-pointers. Four of the last five point guards against the Celtics have gone over their uh, three-point prop over-under. That includes, that includes D'Angelo Russell, who made four on an over-under of two and a half. That's what we're hoping Trey can do. And that's all we got. Three picks for you guys to lock in. Make sure to like the video, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, as I mentioned, helps me out a ton. And the last thing I'll say is that I do have a dub club. It's only five bucks a month. And don't don't let me, don't think that I'm trying to sell you some sort of VIP picks package. Everything that I give out on dub club, I give out for free on YouTube. It's the same exact picks. The logic, if you want the dub club, is there are some people that just don't want to watch the videos, right? Either don't have time or don't care about the analysis and they just want the picks or there are people that don't want to wait until the odds change. So they will lock in the picks immediately when I send them out on Dub Club, and then they'll watch the YouTube video for analysis. But again, whether you get it on Dub Club for five bucks a month, or whether you get it for free on YouTube, I'm not giving you anything on Dub Club that you cannot get for free on YouTube. That part is very important to me. But if again, if you want to spend the five bucks a month, get them texted to you, get them early, you can. However you want them, totally fine with me. And that's all we got. Appreciate everybody for watching and have a good one.